In this video, I'm making a fountain centerpiece for my medieval village. This terrain build is created at 32mm scale and will be the perfect addition to my fantasy based RPGs and tabletop war games. I had a bunch of leftover bricks from the ruined buildings I created in my last video, and decided I wanted to use them to create something new. One way I like to come up with ideas is to play around and build things without glue. Once I have a general idea, I can finalize the dimensions and go from there. I'll be using tacky glue and wood glue interchangeably throughout the build. These types of glues have a strong hold, dry fast, and also have the benefit of providing a bit of working time before being completely dry. Machine blocks are a great tool for crafting. They can be used to hold pieces in place, or in this case, make sure my build is straight. I cut out a chunk of XPS foam to create the bottom portion of the fountain. I'm going to be cutting down this piece of foam on a hot wire table with a circle jig. Attachments like these are really fun to use and unlock new ways of using the hot wire table. It was at this point I ran into a roadblock. The way I imagined building this fountain would require cutting down this chunk into thinner pieces. Unfortunately, the size I wanted would not fit on the table. After a bit of problem solving, I decided to change directions and go with an octagon instead. I'm using this template I created as a guide for the angled cuts. The octagon was working great and the bottom portion started to take shape, but I realized the differences in the cuts were becoming compounded, and eventually the mistakes were becoming quite noticeable. This led me to come up with a new direction which would be to complete all the walls first and then cut the angle into them with a hot wire table. I thought it would be interesting to share some of the roadblocks I faced and how embracing mistakes and solving problems is a large part of the crafting process. I'm adjusting my hot wire table in order to get the proper angle for an octagon. This new way of creating walls for the octagon was working much better and I was happy with how everything was turning out. The pieces are then glued together into the final shape. Next, I cut down some smaller squares for the top of the pillar. Layering these creates some interesting detail. The base of the fountain is created by cutting down a chunk of XPS foam. The piece required is too large to fit on the hot wire table. To get around this, I cut down two thinner pieces and glue them together. The octagon is then glued down to the base. I'm using a piece of foam to create guides around the octagon. I then cut out the shape, leaving behind a slightly larger perimeter. The 
The previous technique is repeated using the same process, ensuring a consistent perimeter around the octagon and creating a stepped base. Rolled up tinfoil is used to create some additional texture to the steps and interior of the fountain. At this point I want to fix up the walls of the octagon. The cuts were clean, but there are still some general gaps that need to be filled. I use spackle to fill these in. The stuff is great at fixing small things while working with XPS foam, and once painted, it completely blends in. In order to prepare for the resin pour, I'm squeezing a line and glue around the interior edge of the fountain. I'm printing this statue from broken anvil miniatures to stand on top of the fountain. Integrating 3D printed bits into scratch built terrain is a good way to make them look more to scale. Next, the central pillar of the statue is then glued down. I printed out some gargoyle heads that I found on Thingiverse. These are going to be used as the fountains. I'm placing some temporary pieces in order to support the glued fountain heads. These are then glued on and left to dry. Once dried, I remove the supports. It's time for paint. I start off with a coat of black all over. I'm using my airbrush to prime the plastic pieces since brushing on craft paint doesn't do too well on these. Once the plastic is primed, I switch over to my paintbrush. Next up is the stonework. I use a few grays and mix them together to create a variety of colors. I'm overbrushing these stones so the deepest recesses are still black. This gives a lot of contrast to the paint scheme. My process of painting bronze begins with a flat brown, Rhinox Hide. Starting with a non-metallic brown allows the shadows to remain dark, creating a more convincing bronze. Afterwards, I'm dry brushing on the first metallic color. This is going to make the statue look shiny and all the areas hit by light. The brighter metallic is applied sparingly to the highest points of the pieces. I want my bronze to look weathered and give it a classic verdigris look. I'm going to be using a Citadel technical paint for this, Nilec Oxide. I coat the bronze pieces entirely in this technical paint, and before it has a chance to dry, I take a makeup sponge and wipe away the majority of the paint. This leaves behind the color in only the deepest recesses. The bronze pieces are then given a final dry brush to make the highest points pop out.
Contrast paint through an airbrush is used to tint the fountain in some areas, making it look weathered and adding some interesting depth to the gray paint job. PVA glue and flock are combined to create moss. This mixture is then painted onto the fountain in select locations. After everything is dried, it's time to move on to the resin pour. I mix equal parts resin and hardener with a bit of green and brown contrast paint. The resin is poured carefully and evenly into the base of the fountain. In order to remove the small bubbles that are frequently found in resin, I use my heat gun set on a low temperature. I'm making sure not to keep the gun pointed in a single spot for too long, in order to not melt the underlying foam. Afterwards, I do some final touch-ups and tint the flock with some green contrast paint. This fountain is now considered done. And that wraps up this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe for future hobby content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.